Hello. Thank you for joining me. What is Eurovision? I don't know. <laughs> Why are you asking me? YouTube title? That's what I came to you for. <laughs> Unless it's asking this guy. I think this guy knows. I have no idea what Eurovision is. I mean, okay, I I have put together that it's got something to do with singing. But apart from that, no idea. It's some kind of singing show. The crazy thing is, it seems to be a show that like people participate. It's like the Olympics for singing or something. All right, let's let's watch. People across the world participate in this. Hey everybody, so the next few scripts right, are I guess across being Europe. Written. We're going to film this week, so that means this is round 2. Of By the way, I just have to say, sorry. Geography Now, wow. Legendary channel. Go check them out. Link down below. Filler Week. I asked you guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, what are some topics you would like me to cover on Filler Week? Last one was the World Cup, and this time it's going to be, by popular demand, Eurovision. By the way, guys, I have a little bit of a list because I'm straightening my teeth with aligners. Like that. And this is what I'm using. I remember the first time I was introduced to Eurovision was, was in 2014 when I visited Denmark, and back then they were actually hosting Eurovision. I had no idea what it was. See, it's like the freaking Olympics. Denmark is hosting Eurovision. Was, and then when I saw it, I was like, uh, wow, this is, a, this is a big deal out here. So today we answer the question, what is Eurovision? Explained by the perfect candidate, me, an American. <laughs> Logic! Someone I can understand. Now, if you really want to know what Europeans think of each other, don't watch the news or read an article on history just watch eurovision speaking of alliances <laughs> though before we get into this this video is okay. a sponsored video which is good because i need to buy a new mic because i can't stand using this thing anymore thank you alliance <laughs> heroes of the spire for sponsoring. this guy really has that tiny ass microphone he's got 3.2 million subscribers <laughs> i mean i know that's a lot of mic but if you're gonna hold it yeah sponsoring this that's funny video. friends and a go get that channel. game get guys <laughs> Looks in legendary. Specifically, okay. guys rock. Thanks a lot. Now back to the main question. What is Eurovision? Well, first of all, specifically- I still don't know. It's the Eurovision Song Contest. Eurovision mm. is actually the name of the network in Switzerland that kind of started the whole thing. Second of all, in the shortest way I can summarize it, it's like the longest running, most watched singing competition in the world, held in May with finals sometimes lasting up to four hours. It involves mostly all- Four hours. All the countries in Europe and a few that aren't even in it as well. Well, then why can't America participate? This sounds legendary. This is like the freaking World Cup for singing. Literally every country in Europe, except for Liechtenstein and no surprise, Vatican City has competed at least once in the competition. Can you imagine if- Why is that? Oh, I guess because there's like 10 people that live there. Vatican in the competition. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe one day, I mean, Europe is pretty surprising. So how did it all begin? <laughs> Basically, be back in the 1950s, Europe had to figure out a way to make everybody cool with each other after World War II. <laughs> so, no shock. Really? Europe's little rational psychiatrist, Switzerland, was like, hey, everyone likes music, so let's do a friendly little singing competition amongst each other to appease really? the masses. And it worked. Switzerland, the most neutral of all nations, hosted the first competition in Lugano with seven countries. And no surprise, Switzerland, the most neutral competitor, won the first competition. Since then, it's been going on literally for over 60 years. Slowly over time, new countries joined in. After the fall of the Soviet Union and Yugoslavia, tons of new countries. Australia participates. Countries wanted in, and now over 40 are taking part. Basically, each country submits an original song and a sing- If Australia gets to participate, then what the hell? Seriously, how is America like that's I feel offended or group to perform for the grand prize. You know, on the surface, it seems kind of fun, but underneath the whole deal, it's like this whole systematically complex formulated competition. It involves a lot of math, politics and strategy. And by strategy, I mean this. I'm five times. That's it. <laughs> the rules are always. <laughs> That's not what I expected. <laughs> what, were those Germans? <laughs> the rules are always changing because they always find new problems. But for one, you get three minutes to sing and you can choose whatever language you want. However, recently, a lot of people have just chosen to sing in English. Belgium once trolled everybody, Perfect. everybody by singing in a fake language twice. And for some reason, they act, what? Why would you use this as an opportunity to troll? The reason Norway once sang in Swahili. Now, because they are the biggest financial contributors, there are five countries that automatically qualify for the final every year. They are France. 
What kind of bull crap is that? I'm sorry, but Germany, Spain, the UK, and Italy. Now you might think because these pay to win, you automatically qualify. That might be unfair. So to make up for yeah. it, these countries, usually send in singers that like deliberately suck, so they can kind of make up for the advantage. What? No one in the world voted for this. It's not that bad. I like this. I don't know what's now, going on. how do you on, but... win? Well, in order to win, you have to get the points, which happens through voting. The voting system has changed throughout the years. At first, there was a single jury that voted. Then there was a jury in every competing nation that gave a point system between 1 to 8, 10, and 12 points to their favorite performers. Then in 1997, they experimented with the first call-in televoting system. Ooh. Then that got messy because politics. So in 2016, they brought back the juries and fused the two together. So each got a 50-50 say in the point system. Basically, the rule is you can't vote for your own country, but you can give points points to other countries. This is where politics usually comes in and why the televoting system got kind of messy. You can really get a sense of who the real friends are. Like the Nordic countries always support each other, the Slavic countries, Greece and Cyprus always give each other like the highest points. And Oh, Russia participates? That's interesting. Wow, this is extremely interesting, I just have to say. I don't I don't know exactly like my brain is kind of I'm kind of like speechless. It's kind of amazing. A worldwide singing competition that I have no idea about. It's like American Idol, but just so much more epic. But you've got all these different panels of people in every country voting for the winner, and they can't vote for themselves. I don't understand. These countries that pay the most for it, they get a buy into the finals, but then they purposely send in people who suck. Then what the what's the point of getting the buy into the final? What's the point of any of it if you just purposely send people who suck? Can you send more than just one person? And so on. So that's why they had to bring the jury system back to balance things out. To this day, Ireland has the most wins at seven. Sweden comes in. Now. Ireland, kind of surprising. Like, there's not that many people who live there right next at six france and luxembourg and the uk each have five the netherlands has four denmark israel and norway have three where's germany and austria germany italy spain switzerland and the ukraine each have two otherwise when it comes oh, okay. to performances pretty much anything goes you can wear wacky costumes use silly props you can incorporate elements that illustrate your nation's culture or heritage you can run around in a hamster wheel you don't even have to use performers that are from your country i mean celine dion won in the 80s she competed for switzerland and she's from canada you can take the competition seriously or you can make a complete fool of yourself and that's kind of the other thing that needs to be addressed apparently from what i've been told many of the countries that that compete in Eurovision don't even want to win Eurovision as in they deliberately suck so that they can lose now why would you want to lose Eurovision because according to the rules the winning country of Eurovision has to host the next Euro <laughs> they need to fix that <laughs> if you're ever incentivizing people to lose in a competition whether intentional or not it should probably be changed because that's ridiculous. So they don't want to host it? Wouldn't that bring in a lot of money? It's like hosting... I guess it's a risk. Eurovision. Hosting a Eurovision is like hosting a little mini Olympics. It costs a lot of money and taxes to accommodate such a huge event that gets bigger and bigger every year. And this... I guess it doesn't bring in enough money to make it worth it or is it just a big risk where the infamous troll contestants come in every year there are so many with like over the top campy horribly constructed performances and it's one of the biggest appeals to watching eurovision every oh oh that's why you wouldn't fix it huh wow that's so fascinating oh, wow Interesting. There's a lot more to this than just on the surface. Everybody wants to see the trolls, and it's 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 almost like there's an art to it. <laughs> Typically, you can tell if it's a troll if the song is either about partying, dancing, or having fun. Usually played to a very poppy techno EDM track, usually accompanied by over the top. So like an American pop song. Flashy costumes and props or bad dancing. From what I've seen, Latvia and Lithuania seem to be really good at this. Like Latvia once dressed up as pirates. 
that's Lithuania badass. Lithuania literally submitted this. We are the windows of your <laughs> Is this supposed to be Green Day? It reminded me of Green Day. Like, um... I can't think of the freaking song. Yeah, it's gotta be. Surprisingly, they came in sixth place that year. You know, usually there's gonna be a bunch of slip-ups and mistakes. They tried to lose and they came in sixth place. It does remind me of how American Idol, one of the biggest, like, most entertaining parts to me was watching the tryouts, not watching the actual, like, competition, but it was when the shitty people tried out and Simon Cowell just tore them a new one. <laughs> that is, like, the best part. <laughs> Ireland oh. once sent in a screaming puppet. The singing can get pretty intense. Does she have clothes on? Oh, and the lyrics sometimes just making sure they're just genius. <laughs> it is where so does the song have to be made up for Eurovision? These people aren't singing. It's not like American Idol where they're singing just like um, actually popular songs, huh? They have to make up songs. One time I love free alcohol. What's he singing about? Like a wedding? Where else is there free alcohol? I'm Finland one with this group. It's the Oh, and don't forget drag queens after drag queens <laughs> after awesome. winning drag queens. And there was that one time Russia was like, eh, screw it. We're just gonna send in a bunch of grandmas baking bread on stage. And they actually got second place in the end. <laughs> what? The Eurovision Song Contest is like Europe's complete musical battle royale that brings in the entire continent, <laughs> plus some other countries that are not part of their continent. Which begs the question, do I think the USA should take part in Eurovision? No, absolutely not. For one, we're what? not part of Europe. Second, we'd probably ruin so? it. Like, seriously. I'm very doubtful any Europeans would be ecstatic to see an American. Well, that'd be fine. We can lose. American and a European. It would be funny, like, you can just get booted out in the first round every year. Competition. We'd be like that really annoying cousin that your friend brought to your party that you kind of politely laugh at their horrible bad jokes just because you don't want to be confrontational. And when he starts talking to you, you're like, oh yeah, 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 hey, um, um I, I have to go to the bathroom, but um, hey, hey, here's Estonia. Have you met Estonia? Yeah, Estonia, US, US, Estonia, yeah, just say hi to each other. And uh, yeah, you two get along, I, I gotta go to the bathroom. And third, we'd probably never win. I doubt we'd ever get many points, if any at all. I mean, maybe the UK and Ireland would throw some pity points, but nobody would want an American to win Eurovision. And if by some miracle, that's probably true. Miracle, we actually did that's win. Okay. It would probably start a bunch of protests and boycotts and inciting World War Three, Four, and Five all at once. So for the safety of the planet, I think it would be best if we sat this one out. So there you go, Eurovision explained. No, I disagree. We need we need it in. I don't care if we lose on the first round. Hi, an American. Hope you like this video. Subscribe if you like. Check out <laughs> Ken on Instagram. He did all the animations for this video. Thank you, Ken. And uh, yeah. That was a really great video. Wow, I actually now fully think I kind of understand. I was going to say fully understand. I don't know about that. I would have to actually watch some to fully understand. And I still don't know, like, how many rounds are there. Stuff like that. The format of the competition. Anyway. That's fascinating. It sounds epic. And uh, I hope you guys consider my plea to let Americans in. I'll even be the first to compete. Maybe. Um, thank you for watching. Go check out Geography Now. That was a great video. Oh, my gosh. Link down below. I hope I see you guys tomorrow. Because I'll be.